Hey guys, it's Mallory here with All About Cats. In this week's video, we're going to be doing an in-depth brand review on one of the more popular so-called natural brands out there, which is Taste of the Wild. So about 10 years ago, when I was starting to become acquainted with this whole world of superior natural pet food, Taste of the Wild was one of the first brands that crossed my radar. I remember standing in this pet food store and seeing these cool looking bags with pictures of mountain lions and other animals and these uh, natural scenes. Based on the way that it was presented, I kind of assumed that Taste of the Wild was the ultimate in healthy, natural feline nutrition. So when years later, I got the opportunity to go in depth and review this brand, I was really excited to learn all the details on Taste of the Wild and to find out if it's actually a good choice. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you about what I discovered and whether or not I think that Taste of the Wild is a healthy, safe, and species appropriate choice for your cat. Whenever I'm reviewing a cat food brand, the very first thing that I do is try to learn a little bit more about its history. As I dug into the background of Taste of the Wild, I found that it was owned by a company called Diamond Pet Foods, which was founded back in 1970 by a couple of brothers-in-law. Their original intention was to make an affordable food that was also high quality, and the idea seemed to be a big hit. By the mid-1980s, they were getting really serious about their marketing, and they landed a few big contracts, uh, including one with Costco. And at that point, they really blew up. And according to Pet Food Industry, by 2020, they were the fifth largest pet food company in the world. While Taste of the Wild is probably their most prominent and recognizable brand, they also have a few other brands of their own, like Diamond Naturals, and they also do manufacturing for a variety of other really prominent brands. Because a lot of companies won't name their manufacturers, we don't know exactly how many companies Diamond Pet Foods is making products for, but we do know that they're making foods for Kirkland Signature, Solid Gold, For Health, and a number of other pretty well-known brands. Again, Taste of the Wild is probably the most recognizable Diamond Pet Foods brand. It's marketed as an all-natural food that aims to meet your cat's ancestral dietary needs. So the foods tend to emphasize meat ingredients, they don't contain any animal byproducts, and they're also grain-free. The Taste of the Wild lineup is broken up into two lines, so they have an original line as well as a prey line. The prey line includes limited ingredient diets, so these are intended to be appropriate for cats with food sensitivities and allergies. Based on my research on a variety of Taste of the Wild formulas, I've observed that their foods tend to be pretty similar to other um, grain-free, supposedly natural cat foods. Their originals line tends to contain a nice array of animal-derived ingredients, while their prey line does a good job of keeping things simple and including just one primary protein source, and not a ton of other ingredients. We're going to go a little bit more in depth on some of their recipes later, including the two recipes that you see behind me, but for now I want to talk a little bit more about how these foods are made. As I mentioned earlier, Taste of the Wild is a diamond pet food brand, and all of their products are manufactured in diamond facilities. So the company operates a few different manufacturing facilities in California, South Carolina, Arkansas, and Missouri. And while all Taste of the Wild foods are manufactured in the United States, their ingredients are sourced from around the world. They provide some information on ingredient sourcing, mentioning that they get some ingredients from New Zealand, Belgium, other countries around Europe, and they source their vitamin packs from China, like the vast majority of pet food companies do. Talking about the ingredients used and the way that the foods are manufactured leads me to our next segment, which is recall history. So according to my research, Taste of the Wild has been involved in one recall. In May of 2012, Diamond Pet Foods announced that they were recalling thousands of units of Taste of the Wild food and over 155 total formulas due to salmonella contamination. Now, this wasn't just a precautionary move. A lot of people and animals were affected. It's known that over a dozen people, as well as numerous animals, got sick. Uh, in multiple states around the United States uh, due to the salmonella contamination. When the FDA did an investigation of the South Carolina plant where these foods were coming from, they found a lot of issues. The FDA report following the inspection said that all reasonable precautions are not taken to ensure that production procedures do not contribute contamination from any source. 
I'll put a link to the full FDA report in the description, but the short story is that they were not keeping a clean camp and doing everything that they possibly could in order to prevent uh, contamination. Incidentally, this was the same plant that was linked to a string of illnesses associated with aflatoxin mold contamination back in 2005. So clearly there were some problems at this Gaston, South Carolina plant. In the aftermath of this recall, there was a class action suit filed against Diamond Pet Foods as well as Costco Wholesale, one of the uh, companies that private labels Diamond Pet Foods products, and they ended up settling for $2 million. After all of this happened, the company said that they were committed to implementing improved uh, quality control procedures, and it's been nine years since. We haven't seen anything else similar to what happened in 2012 or in 2005 since, so it does appear that potentially they have changed the way that they're handling their operations over there. As for recalls affecting other Diamond Pet Food brands, there was a recall in 2013 that was relatively small compared to the other ones that we've talked about. It involved low levels of thiamine in some of their foods, and it doesn't seem like any cats were affected uh, by this issue. It is worth mentioning that there have been a couple of lawsuits against Taste of the Wild in recent years. So in 2018, there was a suit alleging that Taste of the Wild was using misleading labeling and not mentioning that there might be traces of pesticides and other things in their foods. And then in 2019, there was another suit filed against Taste of the Wild alleging that some of their foods had tested positive for high levels of lead, arsenic, some pesticides, and uh, toxins that were not supposed to be in the food. Now, the analysis that was presented in the latter lawsuit did show unusually high levels of lead in one of their recipes. Uh, this appears to be most likely a fluke. Obviously, a lot of pets are eating this food without having issues, and for the most part, it does appear that there is not a significant issue with heavy metals in their food. That being said, it's really inconclusive, and it's just worth being aware of this. So that's that for some background on the brand. We've talked about where the brand's coming from, its parent company, and we've learned a little bit more about the way that it's manufactured, as well as its recall history. But in order to really understand a cat food, we need to take a look at the food itself. So let's take a closer look at three of their most popular recipes. Now for this video, I'm going to be taking a look only at their original line. Their line of limited ingredient foods is pretty similar except, well, limited ingredient. And I wanted to take a look at these recipes as they do appear to be the most popular that Taste of the Wild has to offer. The first one that I want to look at is their Rocky Mountain grain-free dry cat food. So it's not clear if this food is primarily made from animal-derived protein or plant protein. It seems to have a pretty good distribution of both. So the food's first ingredient is chicken meal, but it also contains pea protein and potato protein pretty prominently on the ingredient list, with a few other sources of animal protein a little bit later on. So it also contains roasted venison, smoked salmon, and ocean fish meal, all sources of that animal protein that your cat needs. Chicken fat is the food's primary source of fat. Again, it's always nice to see an animal-derived fat prominently placed on the ingredient list. And then in addition to these primary ingredients, we see a smattering of berries as well as prebiotics and probiotics. One of the interesting things about Taste of the Wild Foods is that they contain guaranteed amounts of probiotics. So this particular recipe, for example, has 80 million colony-forming units per pound guaranteed. Of course, there are still questions about viability. We don't know how much probiotic content is still going to be in the food by the time your cat eats it, but it does seem to be a little bit better than some other brands that don't give you any information of that type. So overall, this food appears to have moderate protein content from a mix of animal and plant protein sources, it has moderate levels of fat, and it's relatively high in carbohydrates. According to the guaranteed analysis, the food is about 51.1% protein, 22.2% fat, and 26.7% carbohydrates on a dry matter basis. At 13 cents per ounce, it's probably going to cost around 26 cents per day if you're feeding a typical 10 pound cat who needs roughly two ounces of food each day. Again, Taste of the Wild is one of the more economical brands offering foods like this. And the next food that we're going to take a look at is their Canyon River recipe. Again, this is from the original line of Taste of the Wild Foods. It's a grain-free product, this time emphasizing 
fish-based proteins as its primary ingredients. Trout is the food's first ingredient, followed by ocean fish meal. Like the other recipe I mentioned, it also contains a few different plant protein sources. It contains sweet potatoes, as well as concentrated potato protein and pea protein. Interestingly, instead of using a fish oil to go with the fish theme, it contains canola oil as its primary source of fat. It also contains a little bit of smoked salmon, but this appears to be a very, very small quantity, given that the very next ingredient is natural flavor. So this is a flavor additive that's just intended to add a little punch of uh, animal flavor to the food. Again, like the last recipe we reviewed, it contains a combination of prebiotics and probiotics, and these appear in guaranteed levels. So each pound of this food contains 80 million colony forming units. So the food appears to be roughly 39% protein, 19.5% fat, and 41.5% carbohydrates, on a dry matter basis. Overall, not really a species appropriate choice for your cat, but for the price, again, 13 cents per ounce, it seems to be a little bit better than some of the other dry options on the market that contain a lot of animal byproducts, artificial colors, and other ingredients that you might not feel comfortable putting in your cat's bowl. So next up, we'll take a look at one of their most popular wet recipes, which is their Rocky Mountain canned food. So it appears that the little chunks inside of each can are a chopped and formed product consisting of several different protein sources and binders. Salmon is the first ingredient on the list, followed by chicken, chicken liver, egg whites, roasted venison, smoked salmon, and ocean fish. These are all mixed up with a couple of different types of broth, as well as pea flour and potato starch, as well as guar gum as a thickener. Overall, while I really like that most of the ingredients on this list are animal derived, it doesn't really appear that this is the most species appropriate food you can give your cat. All of those additional plant ingredients add up to a relatively high carbohydrate level for a canned cat food. Overall, according to the guarantee analysis, the food is about 49.4% protein, 18.5% fat, and 32.1% carbohydrates on a dry matter basis. In other words, it does a pretty good job of delivering that animal-based protein, but it's pretty high in carbohydrates. Carbohydrates aren't necessarily bad for your cat, but at the same time, there is a chance that they could increase your cat's risk of developing diabetes. And if your cat already has diabetes, they're only going to make the situation worse. Furthermore, while cats can metabolize carbohydrates, they aren't really necessary for their health. And ultimately, it seems that a lower carbohydrate diet is superior. This food costs about 23 cents per ounce. In other words, this food continues Taste of the Wild's theme of being a little bit cheaper than similar competing foods. So overall, what do I think of Taste of the Wild? Do I think that this is going to be a good choice for your cat? It could be a good option if you're looking for an affordable entry point into this world of so-called natural foods that aren't containing a lot of artificial colors and preservatives and other additives that might be harmful to your cat's health over time. That being said, I can't say that it's the best brand that I've ever reviewed. I'm a little bit concerned by Diamond Pet Foods' history of recalls and Taste of the Wild's foods, whether you're looking at their original line or their prey line, wet food or dry food, aren't really all that impressive. There are a lot of other foods on the market that are very, very similar. It's a brand worth trying out and considering, but it's not one that I would actively recommend. To break things down and make it a little bit simpler, let's look at how Taste of the Wild rates according to the All About Cats standard. In terms of species appropriateness, I'm going to give them a 7 out of 10. This brand does a pretty good job of incorporating animal-derived ingredients, but it's not perfect. You're still definitely going to see quite a few plant-based proteins and a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of things that your cat doesn't really need and which don't fall into at least the traditional idea of a species-appropriate feline diet. As for ingredient quality, I'm going to give them a 7 out of 10. I appreciate that they're not using a lot of animal or plant byproducts, but at the same time, we don't really know that there's particularly superior ingredient quality. As for product variety, I'm going to give them a 5 out of 10. Their lineup isn't really all that varied, and they don't have a ton of different options to choose from. It's nice that they have a few limited ingredient options, but other than that, this really isn't the most varied brand. In terms of price, I'm going to give them a nice 8 out of 10. 
this brand is doing a good job of keeping their prices really competitive. In terms of customer experience, again, they're going to get a seven out of 10. A lot of people really like Taste of the Wild. This brand has a lot of really loyal customers. And when I looked at customer reviews on Chewy, most of them were positive. At the same time, we have this history of recalls on the part of Diamond Pet Foods, as well as a few different uh, class action lawsuits. And when you put those things together, I think that they're going to somewhat erode the trust that people tend to have in Taste of the Wild. I'm going to give them a four out of 10 in terms of recall history. Again, this brand has only been recalled one time, but it was a pretty significant recall and its parent company has been involved in a few other things that seem a little bit concerning. I'm going to give them a 6.3 out of 10 score overall, which amounts to a C plus grade. So that's it for our review of Taste of the Wild. I hope that it gave you a better understanding of what this brand has to offer and if it could be a good choice for your cat. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. And if you are interested in more cat food brand reviews, reviews of other products, buyer's guides, and information on all things cats, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. I'll have links to a variety of different resources in the description, as well as links to all of the products mentioned here. While you're in the description, you'll also see a link to sign up for our free recall alert program, which is a completely free way to stay informed and help to keep your cat safe. So thank you so much for watching this video. Again, I hope that you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.